This is 9.5 dealing with the binomial theorem. Our first three objectives are to be able to use what we call combination notation and be able to calculate these combinations, be able to generate Pascal's triangle, and then expand binomials using the binomial theorem. These are three very seemingly unrelated ideas and as we approach them and go through these three objectives you're going to think they're kind of unrelated but eventually we're going to link them in the end. So this is warm-up number one and I would ask that you write this down and you're going to find it a little tedious at first but please do give this a try. So I'm going to do the first three for you and then you're going to have to go on to the next. So the first one is this binomial x plus y we're going to bring up to the zeroth power and of course anything to the zeroth power is equal to one. Two, this one's easy, it's just itself, it's one x plus one y. Three, we would have to FOIL out, so we're going to have to multiply that binomial twice to itself. And what we would get is this. I'm going to leave you do, to do x plus y to the third on your own at this point. And I did leave you kind of with the harder one, but really all you need to do is you have to take this x plus y to the second that I've simplified here and multiply another x plus y to it. So go ahead and do that and pause me now. And if you're cheating, then you'd never pause me, but I am going to expose the answers at this point. So pause me. But here is the answer to x plus y to the third. So you'll see again, I took my x plus y to the second, expanded out, <clears throat> times this x plus y, and then we got several terms in that multiplication process. But when you simplify it all out, you're going to get this. So this one, I took my what I expanded out to the third power, and I multiplied another piece and a lot of more terms there, and then simplified, we got this. So just keep in mind, if you didn't simplify, to go back and do that. But there, those parts go to that. And then likewise, those of that. All right, so please do make the effort to write these in your notes. This was the first kind of objective was expanding binomials. Warm up number two. This is going to be dealing with what we call combinations. There's two things in statistics that are close re closely related. They're combinations and permutations if you've gone through a statistic class. We're going to be dealing with that idea that, hey, you're going to be four, there's four students wanting to be in student council, and there's just two slots. Let's say that you're one of these four students, you're John, and you want to figure out what is the probability that you're going to be on the student council. Well, the first thing about probability is all the favorable outcomes divided by all possible outcomes. So what John would want to do is figure out how many different combinations could there possibly be. So down here, I did do that effort of listing out all those different options and basically what I just did was I linked John with each of those three following classmates and then I had to move on to Paul and I wouldn't go backwards because note that yeah I could have linked Paul to John but then Paul and John would have been the same type of combination. Now permutations is where order mattered. It would be maybe like you had four students and you wanted a first and a second position in which case, if John was first, Paul was second, that would be different if Paul was first and John was second, right? <clears throat> so permutations orders matters, combinations order doesn't. This would be an example of combinations because we just wanted to know what kind of groupings, combinations could there be. So then Paul and George would go with George, Ringo, George and Ringo um, would be what was left. So if we did pursue that probability problem. John was in one, two, three out of the six possible combinations, so there was a 50% chance that John was going to get on that student council had there been an even shot of all four being on. So there is the idea of combinations. <clears throat> so hopefully you write, wrote that example down. And then now, combination calculations. So in this situation, that you're trying to do these different combinations where order does not matter, we have a certain notation for that. Um, so we have n, choose r, or we also notate it with these interval um, brackets. So n is the total number and r is the chosen amount. So let's say there were four applicants, three selected or three chosen, it would be out of four, choose two. So there's our notation and then of course we would also have something like this. 
So now the calculation for this. So rather than having in this last slide, having to go through and list out all those possible combinations of four students with two slots, we have this calculation right here. So you're going to see our factorials brought back up into play. And then what we are going to do is we're going to use this now. So let's say we had four choose zero. It's kind of weird, but let's say that there were four students and we were choosing zero. Obviously in that situation, there's only one possible outcome. No one gets on, right? But we could use this calculation right here. And there's my four factorial because it's the total amount, total amount that was possible and then over 4 factorial because it would be 4 minus 0 and then our, um, then our r, which the number selected was 0, 0 factorial. So simplify it all out, that is going to be 1 because really what we have is 4 factorial over 4 factorial times, now 0 factorial is a weird one, 0 factorial is just equal to 1. I know it's strange, but please do um, take that into account right now. So here we just had 4 factorial over 4 factorial, that's how I got that 1. But then also here we could do the same thing. We would have 4 factorial over, and then here's where we would take 4 minus 1 because we would take the total amount minus the number selected. So 3 factorial times, and then our r, again that's the number selected, 1 factorial. So this just simplifies to be 1, right, again. So this is where we would use those ideas. What is factorial again? Oh yeah, that's when we're doing 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over 3 times 2 times 1. So those cancel out. We are going to get 4 here. If you did this, <clears throat> we're going to have 4 factorial all over. 4 minus 2 is 2 factorial times 2 factorial. So if you did play this out, we would have 4 factorial over 2 times 1 times 2 times 1, that's going to actually just be 4. So if you did your 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, really those 4s are going to cancel out. So all we have left is 3 times 2 times 1. This is equal to 6. And then same thing down here. Go ahead and give those a try. I will give those, um, reveal those answers on another slide to come. So give those a try. Oops, and I moved on to the next slide. So here we are. Idea three is a triangle pattern creation. So this is going to be a new pattern. See if you can figure out what I'm doing here. So I'm going to just start with this base triangle. It's just one, one, and one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grow off of this. So I'm going to do one, two, one. And then I'm going to grow off of this row to create a new row. I'm going to have a one, a three, a three, and a one. And then I'm going to grow off this row. So here I'm going to have my 1, and then 4, 6, 4, and 1. And I'm going to grow off this row, create a new row, starting with my 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. I'm going to create a new row, 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. What a strange pattern. I don't know if anyone's seen it, but I am doing a certain pattern here. I would like you to pause and see if you can't try to figure out what pattern is causing me to generate the next row. What am I using? Because these are very specific numbers. Uh, there's a very specific reason why I'm choosing the numbers I'm choosing. Can you figure that out? So go ahead and pause me. Otherwise, be a cheater and cheat yourself out of this glory of coming up with the pattern, but what we call this is Pascal's Triangle. This is what you will want to write down in your notes. Please do write that we're going to have a diagonal 0, here's our diagonal 1, we got to start at 0, and then row 0, row 1, we're going to also start at 0 for our rows. So please do kind of indicate that to yourself and kind of star that because that is important. So if you didn't figure this out, what I was using is you're always going to start with your base triangle 1, 1, 1. We always start with 1's and diagonal 0. So our diagonal 0 is all 1's because we're going to start each row with 1. But then what we do is we use the two numbers above it to create and sum up that next term expected. So here we would have 1 and because those were 1's above it, 
I'm going to add those up and get 2. So same thing here. These are going to add up to be 3. And again, we always start with 1. These also added up to be 3. And then we always end with 1. So 1, 1. And then this one, again, you can see how these are combining to sum up to be the numbers in my next row. That's how I was generating these. And what I would do is definitely get this copy down in your notes, at least up to what I do, row 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, at least up to row 10. So now let's quickly review. We've had three different ideas. First idea was the expansion of binomials, right? And we came up with these final answers, these expanded forms of these binomials to various powers. Then we looked at idea number two. We came up with these combination calculations using this definition right here. And then we looked at Pascal's triangle. So if we combine all three of these ideas, I don't know if you would notice, but is there any similarity that you can see amongst these three different ideas? And take a moment, pause me if you'd like to try to identify it, but otherwise if you cheat and you're gonna cheat yourself of the glory, I want you to pay attention to this, the degree four binomial that we expanded, this, we were going off of combinations of four here in our examples, and I would like you to look at row four here. Is math created, or is it something that's just there? It's a natural substance that is just waited to be discovered. Not created, but discovered. So here, um, we have those one, four, six, four, one. Again, we had one, four, six, four, one. Here is our link that is going to help us with our main objective for this chapter is expansion of binomials. We're going to use Pascal's triangle and thus we're going to use these combination calculations to help us. Alright, so what I do want you to see is Pascal's triangle could also be generated not just by that adding of the rows um, but above it. What we could also do was combinations. So let's say that I did want the next row here instead of saying alright start with one we could then figure out what is 5 choose 0. Do that on your calculator and what you would get is 1. If you wanted the first term, or like the second term, but because this is diagonal 1 um, here, because we start with diagonal 0 here, diag, diag. If you wanted that diagonal 1 and then in row 5, then what we would have to do is 5 choose and then we would have 1 because we were in row 5, choose 1, and what you would get is 5. Okay, And then if you did these on your calculator, so I did forget to mention that, if you do want to do any of these on your calculator, these combination calculations, go to your math button, which is underneath your alpha button, then you're going to arrow over to probability or PRB because again, oops, PR, PRB, and then it's the second, third, third one down, C, it's your N C R button, <clears throat> third one down. So you can always just type in, for example, 5, hit math, go to probability, get your N C R or your combination, then it's going to have N C R that it puts on your calculator, and then you would just go ahead and you would put 1, and what you would get when you entered was 5. Alright, so here is that binomial theorem that this chapter is all about. The expansion of a degree n binomial is going to be x to that n, okay, plus, and then here is that expansion. So the coefficients of our expansion, this is also why instead of just combinations, these are also called binomial coefficients, but the n choose r is going to be the coefficients that we end up using in our expanded binomial, like you saw in that slide that linked them all together. So again, we're still using this right here, but now instead, N stands for the row that we're interested in, and R stands for the term that we're interested in the row. So keep in mind, the very first term is the zeroth term. So zeroth, this is kind of like A sub zero, this is our a sub 1, our first term, dot, 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 all the way up to our a sub n coefficient or a sub n term.
So here is another definition of the binomial theorem that is out there. And it looks a little bit complicated, and it's going to seem complicated at first, but there's a more simple explanation that we could describe this in English. But this is, can we put this notation to work? Everything that we're learning about expanding binomials or the patterns that we saw, saw there, um, everything that we know about summation notation, combination calculations now, can we put these all together? So I'm going to continue on from this example that we had going right here. If I wanted x plus 5 to the 4th, what's it going to be? And if you did see, hey, what was going on here, um, hopefully you're seeing that, yeah, we're going to be now taking this row right here. All right. So can we combine that idea to this definition right here, um, x plus y to the 5th, and then get some sort of simplified English version of what this, this is. So here, we are going to use this notation to the fullest. We're starting at an index just zero. So we're starting at the zeroth term and we're gonna work our way up to five. So now anywhere that where there's an n, that's gonna be fixed because we are going up to the fifth term. But this is the thing that's changing, right? J is gonna constantly be changing. So I'm gonna have five minus and then J times my first term, which in this case is x to the 5 minus j, and then times my second term to the j. So let's go ahead and start calculating this then. The very first thing that I'm going to do, a sub 0, then is plug in 0 for all my j's. So I'm going to have 5 choose, and then we're going to have 5 minus 0, which is 5, times x to the 5 minus 0 is 5 times y to the j, which is again is 0, y to the 0. So that would be a sub 0 right there. Plus, again, this notation that we've been using, it means sum it up. It's a series. It's taking this sequence, this equation that generates terms, and it's saying add them up from 0 to 5. So I'm going to have to now find out what is a sub 1 using my sequence equation. So here, again, this is my more specific, uh, specified one to this situation right here. We're going to be taking 5 choose, and this time it's going to be j is 1, because I'm letting this be a sub 1, 5 minus 1, so 5 choose 4, times, and then it's x to the 4, because it's the same thing that's going on here, times y to the j again, reminder, j was 1. Plus, we have 5, choose, and then this time j, we're at a sub 2 now, so we're going to take 5 minus 2, we're at 3, times x to the 3, because x to the 3, same thing as these, times y to the, don't forget, 2. Plus, and I'm going to continue filling this in, as should you, but here we go. So there that is, every single one from a to 0 to a to 5 added up. If you did calculate these c's and then you also simplified any of these, like for example y to the 0 as just 1, you would get the following. Okay, so here, I don't know if you can kind of in English describe what's going on. Go back to your expanded form warm-up now. If you can kind of see what's happening with what this is doing to this situation, if you would kind of notice, we have Pascal's triangle, right? We can use row 5 off of Pascal's triangle. The other thing that we can do is note how this starts with the highest degree. Our first term is going to start at 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then 0, right? And then the y would have started, our second term is part of this, y to the 0, right? And then it increases 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our expanded form, the degree of the binomial is the row that you use in Pascal's triangle. Right? Don't forget, we start at 0. So this, again, was um, 5 choose 0 or 5 choose 5 all the way to 5 choose 0. And then the first term descends by 1, and the first term ascends, and the, sorry, second term ascends by 1. So... We start with the highest degree 5, which was the power uh, that we were trying to put our binomial up to. And it's that first term 
is going to descend, and then that second term is going to ascend. So see if you can kind of see, all right, I could have used this, see what exactly it was telling me, this is what's going on, and we can simplify it with English. So here is your homework, 9.5, or your practice problems. I am going to do a few of these with you. So number 13 is asking us to evaluate, pass, use, evaluate using Pascal's triangle. So they gave us this thing right here. They want us to evaluate 7 choose 4 without typing it into our calculator and without using our n factorial over n minus r factorial r factorial. They want us to use Pascal's triangle. So what you're going to do is you're going to say, well, this is row 7, this is diagonal 4. Now don't forget, we start at row 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is the row that we want. And then we want diagonal 4. So don't forget, this is diagonal 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. We want this guy right here done. It's 35. Okay, so 7 choose 4. There were 7 contestants and 4 were selected. 35 different combinations could exist. Um, 17 or <clears throat> 17 is going to be used binomial theorem to expand and simplify. So a plus 6 to the fourth. We do need to simplify this. So here's where <clears throat> that binomial theorem is going to be the easiest part of all this. The simplifying is going to be the hardest part. So what we're going to go ahead and do is say, hey, I need to use Pascal's triangle row number four. So here's what we need. Okay. And I'm just going to list those out and leave a lot of room here because I'll have to put some things in between. So 6, 4, and 1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this A and I'm going to bring it to the fourth power. And then I'm going to descend with that because this is what that binomial theorem states. Okay, and then with the second term, 6, I'm going to bring that up to the fourth. Oh, I'm sorry, the zeroth, because I'm going to ascend with that. So here, 6 to the 1, 6 to the 2, 6 to the 3, and then 6 to the 4. So here we are going to have to add up in between. And so simplifying this all out, it's going to be a to the 4th plus, and then here we have 4 times 6, so it's going to be 24a to the 3rd. This one, it's getting a little bit more complex, but we're going to have 6 times 36, so plus 216a to the second, plus we're going to have 4 times 6 to the third, so 864, and then don't forget that a, plus, and then we have 6 to the fourth, which is going to be 100, 1,296. There is the expanded form of that right there. It beats doing the a plus 6 times a plus 6 plus times a plus 6 times a plus 6. Um, still a process, but it totally beats having to actually expand it out without the binomial theorem.